Bundy pinned his man one time with a three count, dropped an elbow on him and pinned him again for yeah. a five count. He told the referee, keep counting. What is up, Straight Talk Society? This is your host, Trevor, and I'm back with another episode of Five Count, my five takeaways from tonight's episode of Monday Night Raw, the April 15th edition. Oh man, I thought it was I thought it was a pretty good raw, man. Um finished off by a tremendous main event. But nevertheless, let's get into it. My top five takeaways from tonight's episode of Monday Night Raw. Number five. Oh my goodness, Seamus returns. After eight months, the Celtic Warrior finally returns and he looks a little bit more beefier and he has back his um his original theme song, which is great. The Twitter sphere seems to love that. Um, Seamus, Seamus's um, return match was kind of scary for me because it was against Big Ivar. You know, Ivar likes to lay his shit in, but two big beefy son of a bitches going at it, and that's exactly what they did. They had a big beefy son of a bitch match that Sheamus came out on top. My only disappointment in this match, not even a disappointment, the only thing I would have done different in this match is I wouldn't have put Sheamus against Ivar. Because Ivar has been kind of on a roll. Ivar has been getting some fan support behind him. Um, and with the draft coming up, I wouldn't have had Ivar lose to a return in Sheamus. I would have put somebody like Nakamura in there. I mean, no disrespect to Nakamura, but Nakamura is just coasting right now. But besides that, man, tremendous, tremendous match. They beat the hell out of each other. Sheamus hit Ivar with a white noise from the second row. Uh, I mean, just just ridiculous. Eight months back, hey, fantastic. My number four takeaway from tonight's episode of Monday Night Raw is, oh my goodness, if you listen to Wrestling With Reality, if you've ever heard me talk for more than five minutes about wrestling, you know that I absolutely loathe the tag team titles. Even on our WrestleMania predictions, I said that I want them to win the belts and then change them. For me, a change would have been just as good as putting the belts on black straps. Oh, but Triple H, just being the wrestling god that he is, said, hold on, Trevor, we'll do one more for you just for being such a fantastic wrestling fan. He presents us with these beauties of tag team championship belts. Now, I'm not going to lie. When I saw the podium in the middle of the ring and they brought Triple H out, I thought that we were going to get Cody Rhodes' new belt. So I'm standing in front of the TV like a 12 year old again. But then my daughter was like, no, it's two belts. It's two belts. So then I'm like, OK, yeah, so it's going to be the tag team championships. I think these belts are beautiful. They're on a black strap. They snap. So no more Velcro, a simple plate. And the WWE logo is small. It's not overbearing. It doesn't take up the entire belt. The maroonish slash red is is not too much. It's just enough in the wording. The gems are placed well. These are beautiful tag team titles. And you watch and see these tag teams are going to be going at it just a little bit harder um, just to wear these belts. Speaking of tag teams, they did have a um, number one contenders match with DIY, the Creeds, and New Day, which DIY did win great match great match um and they will be taking on awesome truth probably at the next uh ple in france so my number three takeaway from tonight's episode of monday night raw oh my goodness rhea ripley vacates the title oh man so i i didn't hear anything about this i um i wasn't online to be truthful to see anybody say anything about it. So Rhea Ripley comes out with a slang. Um, she gives an impassioned promo. She has to vacate the, the title. What they're doing is they're putting the heat on Liv, saying that it was from the attack last week. Um, Rhea Ripley successfully defended against Becky in what I thought was a really good match at WrestleMania. Then she got attacked backstage against um, Liv last week. And then she comes out with this. So I doubt that Liv did anything. I mean, even though when she threw that chair at her head, if anything, I would have said she had a head injury. 
Um, I think that is something serious because she says she'll be gone for for a couple of months. So here's the thing that I found interesting. I thought that they could have kept the title on Rhea Ripley because Rhea Ripley's been champion for a year and has only had 11 title defenses. I had to look it up. I couldn't believe it. 11 title defenses in one year. So in theory, she could have held on to the belt and did what she did throughout her whole title reign, just come out and cut promos. But if she's going to be gone for any length of substantial time and can't get physical, she might as well vacate the title. And guess what? I say put that damn title on Nia Jax and let Nia Jax run with it and let the chips fall where they may. It's Nia Jax's turn. Don't put it on Becky. Don't put it on Liv. Put the title on Nia Jax and let her continue to wreck these bitches like she's been doing. Oh, man, let's get to my number two takeaway from this episode of Monday Night Raw. Oh, man, the seeds are being planted. So tonight, um, Kathy Kelly interviewed Jay Uso, my excuse me, main event Jay Uso in the back. And she asked him, she said, hey, what about, you know, what happened to Jimmy Uso? And Jay Uso looking all sad. And he just said, I told Jimmy to come with me. And then he said, but I can't worry about that right now. Just that subtle, subtle thing with this new civil war, not knowing who the new head of the table is, not knowing who the new boss is, who's giving the orders. Is it The Rock? Is it Solo? Who knows? Like I said on um, Five Count this past Friday, this is setting up for the civil war. You are going to get the Usos to reunite along with a baby face Roman Reigns to take on a rock led bloodline wolf pack, I guess, or a bloodline black and white versus the bloodline red and black. Who knows? But it's going to be tremendous um, storytelling and wrestling, drama and wrestling at its best. Um, I'm just along for the ride. And my number one takeaway from tonight's episode of Monday Night Raw. Oh, my goodness. The Matt Classic. We were treated to a uh, treat tonight with Sami Zayn and um, Chad Gable. They tore the house down tonight in Montreal. Well, let me go back to this first shot. I am loving. Shout out to WWE's production. I am loving what they're doing. So Jey Uso got attacked by Judgment Day. He fought him off. He went through the crowd. He goes through the crowd through the fans in the corridor area, walks outside. Sami Zayn is standing there looking up at God knows what. Sami Zayn said, this is the first place I watched wrestling. So now it's crazy that I'm coming back as a champion. Then Sami Zayn walks back the same way through the fans. I mean, my goodness, whoever is doing this shot it is the little things in wrestling that just make all the difference. And when you got 16,000 people in the building, this looks phenomenal. So Sami Zayn and Chad Gable had a tremendous match. I mean, German suplexes on the heads. I mean, angle slams from the top rope, exploder suplexes, halluva kicks. In the end, oh, there was a spot where Chad Gable hit a moonsault and missed, but in doing, missing the moonsault, grabbed Sami Zayn's leg for an ankle lock. I just thought the timing and precision on that was fantastic. Chad Gable is that dude. Chad Gable is friggin' awesome. Sami Zayn did get the win. Tremendous match. Chad Gable goes, um, Chad Gable, Sami Zayn goes ringside. You know, Gable hugs him, everything like that. He leaves. Sami Zayn goes to ringside, kisses some guy, hugs his wife. Everything's right with the world. That's where I thought Sheamus was going to come out and hit him with a bro kick, thinking that Sheamus would be the next person in line for the IC title just because he's never won it. I just thought that was a story that wrote itself. All of a sudden, the camera pans in tight and you just see Sami Zayn being lifted off the ground into a German suplex. Chad Gable does what everybody knew he was going to do, thought he was going to do it at WrestleMania. He turns heel on Sami Zayn, beats him from pillar to post, puts this awesome ankle lock on him in the ropes. Just fantastic. I mean, my goodness, Chad Gable is awesome. Now he's going to shed that goofball American Academy, um, Alpha Academy, whatever they call it. Just, just, just tremendous, man. 
hey, this Monday Night Raw has been a, a joy to watch lately. I, I think if Monday Night Raw could somehow get rid of that third hour, it would be the best wrestling show on TV, period. With this current writing style, with this current production style that they're doing, they're making everything tighter. Is I mean, it's, it's just becoming must-watch television. And when they go to Netflix, I mean, I am really, really um, excited for when they go to Netflix to see what they have in store. But those are my five takeaways from tonight's episode of Monday Night Raw. I'll see you on the other side. Peace!